Welcome to the Roma Press Podcast with John Solano and Andy Mattioli. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Roma Press Podcast. We hope you are doing very, very well. A quick thank you to our newest patron over at Patreon, Corey Duncan, and of course to all of our other wonderful patrons who make all of this possible. We greatly appreciate your support. If you'd like to join, patreon.com slash Roma Press, and I will take this away from Andy having to do it for the second time in the in a row. We are on YouTube. We are going to be doing a, a video of the podcast. It is going to be sometime within the next couple of weeks. It is going to turn into a, a video podcast as well, so audio, but you can also watch the video on YouTube, audio in all of the same places that you get it now, wherever uh, you download all of your podcasts. Uh, we will keep you updated as to uh, when that is ready to go, but if you would like to, in the meantime, you can also listen to the podcast on our YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe there as well, of course, that obviously helps us as well. Uh, youtube.com it's is roma press right andy it's not R- roma press it's, it's is, is roma, roma press yes, yes. okay is roma press where again you can listen to the podcast and soon here it will also be in the form of video and you so can also you, follow the occasional your live stream, live stream. Yes. yes yes where uh, you confront and discuss what people have to say and uh, well, usually it's it's a sort of it's the it's the closest we've come to offering people therapy i think we've moved on past <laughs> the pa- past the podcast where it was just the two of us getting therapy and then now it's just it's going to be a global thing yeah well you know i really went down into went down into the the depths of like i won't say the pravity because it makes it seem like i'm accessing these weird weird websites that uh, you can only find on the dark web uh, but um after what took place friday evening i am truly truly thankful that we did the a, a 48 hours moratorium of speaking uh, because the difference in the way i feel now versus immediately after are pretty drastically different i felt like the world was ending on friday um but then uh, something happened yesterday andy because um and hopefully some of uh, well not never mind they, they don't speak english so they won't be hearing it now some of my family uh because my wife and i we are uh, about to surpass bin laden in the number of children uh, we're about to yep. have our 17th um we we told <laughs> uh, some people yesterday okay And within half an hour of us telling some people, I found that there was a video on YouTube that comes out of nowhere saying happening now. Uh, Did you see this in Mexico? A couple uh, was doing the gender reveal thing, which I've never done for the previous uh, 19 children. We've never done that. Let's keep it that way, please. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody needs to know. Um, They did the gender reveal by having a plane fly over them. And dropping uh, a smoke, something, some sort of flare, smoke, uh, something uh, to reveal the gender of the baby. But then uh, the, the plane that drops it, okay, it drops the smoke. And then the, it, it tries to, uh, because it flew lower to to, to uh, fly up just above, not right above, obviously, but, but leave room uh, to come close to like the patrons at this party. And then it tries to, um, I, I don't know what the technical analysis of this what this is called but it tries to like pull back up to 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 gain height and it like just stalls out and crashes and part of me thought wow like i d- i'm not saying i caused that but i am a firm believer in like this uh just the universe having this weird uh, uh cycle of the way certain actions happen i don't know but just the fact that like 20 to 30 minutes previously we were doing the same well kind of the same thing i thought jeez you know wow and the fact that it was on twitter too it just the embodiment of uh the year 2023 so um you won't uh, again for child number uh, 22 we won't uh, we certainly won't be doing that 
But uh, that is my long-winded way of uh, easing our way into what took place against Milan on Friday evening. And to keep this balanced, even though the results sucked, we all know that the performance, uh, particularly that first half, which, by the way, I said during the match in the group chat that that might have been the worst 45 minutes under Jose Mourinho. I don't know if that is actually and truly the case because I didn't have time to go through the entire uh, discography of poor first half performances of Roma under uh, Jose Mourinho. And by the way, that is not me blaming him. Some uh, immediately, as I tweeted that out, uh, one of the one of the many many which uh, we get along now, but. Some of the uh, Mourinho supporters, they, they took that as like a veiled insult at the guy. No, I'm just using it as a point of reference. But I did think, Andy, that that first half was one of the most abysmal uh, performances that they have had uh, in 45 minutes under Jose Mourinho. I mean, that first half had nothing, absolutely nothing. And then on top of that, too, and I think this is more of um, a, a, a wider... A, a, a meta- metaphor for Roma, how they give up both goals, what, two minutes into each half, uh, three minutes into each half, because that VAR review took forever, as per usual. Uh, and then what, uh, just after half time, what, what, when did he score? Of course, I should know this. I didn't look it up exactly, but it, it was before the 50th, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you want to talk about like a, a kick to the right testicle and then to the left. I mean, you absolutely kill yourself and alter your approach, your uh, your tactical, uh, I suppose, just like your tactical uh, game plan after bo- uh, after each subsequent half. Uh, I, I just, I can't think of a worse time to actually concede a goal. So I... Where do you want to start? First half match overall. I mean, I, I there's no reason to talk about the first half. It was it was terrible, T- terrible. There's no reason to even bring it up. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, the the match I think never really took off for Roma. Perhaps with the exception of of, of those final ten minutes or so, Roma never came alive. It was really sort of a, a very dormant performance. We never. Well, that's a- theme against Milan, yeah? I mean, well, down Milan, to zero, Milan, and then what yeah. happens last season? They wake up in the final 10 minutes, Ibanez, and then, you know, they draw 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Yes, yes, and and also, I mean, Stefano Pioli has Mourinho's number, like, he just completely, he he has him every time. It's, it's. Uh, I don't think, I, I don't even remember when Roma really imposed themselves against Milan. When was that? Um, so far, I can only recall either draws or really, really disappointing and bad performances because it always looks like Roma feel completely inferior to um, to Milan. It, it's sort of Milan is one of those teams that when Roma they go up against them, it almost looks like this 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 uh, this Roma side is completely absolutely convinced of their inferiority to Milan and they are just flat out accept it so even though you know I I can agree that Milan are better and I said it on the live stream I I said it I said it to to the fans I I agreed with the consensus in my mind that it's only fair you know to 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 consider Milan a top side and not consider yourself above Milan because Milan are far ahead in terms of development this is a team that uh, a year ago, won a scudetto uh, that is uh, was able to 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 have uh, you know more leeway in terms of the transfers. Um, they were uh, able to. Selling re- Tonali looked like a a, a masterclass. By the way, yeah, they did not I, miss him uh, for a so, moment. No, exactly. It uh, you know they were able to do what they wanted to do with that money, and and now they got a whole new. Mm, Attack and with that, with the exception of uh, 57 year old Giroud who keeps scoring goals against us. Uh, and but but to me, the most important so, even you know, I didn't even expect Roma to to go out and uh and you know and win in in a, an impressive fashion. What I wanted to see was for Roma to not show me that 
gulf of 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 difference in attitude in physicality in fitness levels mm-hmm. like it was so it was embarrassing not because of the result not because you lost in your own home uh, and this was you know the the second loss of the season with the season just starting your your negative result i could have even accepted the loss but it but under different circumstances, under the circumstances of okay, this team really tried everything. They they went head to head with with Milan. Um, you know they they kept running, they kept working. You could see that. No, the the one the one good thing that I can take away from this game and the one image that sort of sticks out is Romelu Lukaku coming on in those final minutes and and really bullying people around him, but getting absolutely no service like that is a perfect encapsulation of that night that there was zero hustle. The only player that actually hustled was Romelu Lukaku. So your latest signing who was presented to the Stadio Olimpico on that same evening. And, but he was the lone ranger out there. Um, he he didn't receive a single ball. He tried to hold up the ball. He tried to let the team move up the pitch. But Roma were timid from start to finish. This was a team that was timid, that never actually, I think, got down on the pitch. They never actually got the memo that this is an official game, that this is, yes, it's against the top side. Okay, cool. But um, you are expected to play. You are expected to show something. Instead, I, I, I think uh, Roma just just never really um put any heart in it which is very unusual for this for this roma side because if there is one thing that we've praised them for in 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 the past is okay they may not have the technical attributes they may have dealt with injuries they may have this they may have that but the heart the spirit the attitude was always there right the, we could always count at least on the fact that this team will go out in glory um, win or lose, they will show up. Well, against Milan, they did not. And I think um, it is really, I wouldn't even say it's alarming because, again, this is the third match day. I see people already saying, well, you know, and, and the media, this is what happens. I, I, we said it, going into the international break, yeah, people are going to yeah, talk either way. So if you win against Milan, you're a Scudetto contender. You lost against Milan. Now, the headlines read how to salvage the season we're not on match day 20th match day 25 match day 30 we're match day three and the season is just beginning so whatever there is to salvage you don't need to salvage you need to prevent from happening in the future that's that's your big lesson right there and so i think what if there is something aggravating about this uh, about this performance is that you had the feeling that Milan actually embraced this challenge and played like a team that is is getting started with the season. They were they were excited, you know. They looked their energy levels were way up. In the meantime, Roma looked completely flat. They looked tired. They looked uh, disorganized. They mm. lacked ideas. It it felt like we were watching a team that is slowly but surely coming to the end of a season we sh- wow it, it, yeah. it, it felt like it was a team that just had that just completed the campaign and is now you know playing the last match of the season and and it is what it is like i and i can understand we were missing dibala lorenzo pellegrini wasn't meant to play but he had to come on because Jose Muawar went down after what 20 30 minutes and um and so we were dealing with those situations. Obviously, you add to that the first two games, which were disappointing. So you may, may be doubting yourself. You may be unsure of what to do now that you're facing uh, a good team as opposed to a lesser opponent, which you were expected to beat in the first place. But in my mind, even in a game like this, where the chips are stacked against you, you have to show up. And Roma didn't even do that. Yeah, and through three matches, okay, two goals conceded, two goals conceded, two goals conceded. Uh, for me, that is the most worrying thing. On, because, on eight shots, on eight shots. Yes, yes. Now, 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 it, it would be easy 
And one of our patrons, Mads, was on the Rui Patricio being finished uh, Metro far before everybody else. And, and I, he saw something that I think <laughs> uh, some of us were maybe wanting to uh, prefer to ignore or maybe just didn't think were as bad as we thought. I, I, I don't think that Rui Patricio right now is at the heart of this issue because, okay, the first match, Salernitana, those two goals. I'm not going to say I can live with them, but those are the, the 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 kind of goals that you know some sort of magic is involved. That you know, again, they're they're very low percentage shots. Okay, I I can okay fine fine Cantreva fine you get both of those. Uh, for uh, Verona though in Milan, Andy, th- those those goals are where I get irked. That that is what that is where I really start to worry because of all of the um, concerns and maybe question marks that uh, are within this team, uh, not only under Jose Mourinho but uh, you know in in the somewhat recent future three five years. Okay, one of the very very few certainties and guarantees almost that were within this team are. The the sound defensive mindedness of the players. I didn't really have to worry about uh, uh, Gianluca Mancini, Chris Smalling. Now it's uh, Diego Llorente, previously Ibanez. Yes, they would make mistakes, of course. But it, it if I could list all eleven guys and and rate, so to speak, my level of concern for each. Most likely, if you look at the departments, uh, defense, uh, the defenders are probably going to be very, uh, the last because Roma, under Jose Mourinho, they know how to suffer. They know how to suffer, which is why I have been shocked, absolutely shocked by these last two performances because they they it's not even the suffer- the moments of the suffering in which they are conceding these goals, Sandy. They, they weren't suffering in those moments. You know, uh, Bayer Leverkusen is the one I like to go to when I think of like Roma suffering. They know how to do it. Uh, there's high tension from zero from minute zero to 90. And, but still, they have this bending but not breaking quality of them. Meanwhile, now, they can't even allow themselves to get into a position where they they need to suffer because they're conceding such silly goals. And again, at the most difficult and just heartbreaking times. I mean, to do it so quickly, Verona was what? Four minutes into the match? So Verona, Milan, before minute five, you're already losing. Uh, come on. Yeah. Well, you and, can't do anything about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and that is, you know, it was, it was your strong suit. Like, that's the whole, you know, I see people now, when the results are not going your way and when the, that defensive solidity is gone, people are like, well, this is what happens when you play this brand of football. But it, in the past, it worked with Roma. Like, what is surprising is we were, if we were solid, it was because we had one of the uh, toughest defenses in, in Europe. And that obviously stems from the fact that Jose Mourinho and Roma accept a certain style of play and that they apply it because uh, because maybe they don't have the tools to play otherwise or maybe it uh, it emphasizes some of the qualities of people like Smalling. But as I said on the live stream, if something's not working, like, it, we, I don't know if you... Do you say it in Italian when you say uh, it's, it's, you know, um, making a mistake is fine, but to persevere is diabolical, you know? Right, right. Yes. Um, like, if you if there is something wrong, and now it's clear, you know, like, even a guy like Chris Smalling so far, I mean, he's a shadow of himself. And he's unreliable. He's making silly mistakes. He's slow. The whole defense is um, is all over the place. And that doesn't mean that they're conceding many chances. That's the problem. They're conceding few chances, but the chances that they're conceding, they concede. And so that's, and they cost you. They cost you big time. That was, you know, that was not within Roma's repertoire. Roma's repertoire was, 
we hold out, we suffer, we hold out, we play under the counter, we we have a long ball to somebody, we 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 rely on the pace of Al Sharawi or rely on the pace on the technical skills and the footwork of 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 uh, Paulo Dybala, but we hold out defensively. We all work toward the same thing. And now everybody's switching off. Like there is a, a clear broken link uh, between the defense, the wing backs, the midfield. Something is not working. I don't want to, I don't want to be the, the guy pointing fingers to Nemanja Matic being gone. Because if, if your whole plan is to rely on a 35 year old and that guy leaves, and and you're helpless without him, then you got problems, you know. But that's that's what I'm saying. If it's not working, you have to change it fast. We're looking at another, you know, another um, another what future of playing with three five two. If the wing backs are not working, if you're not getting the assists that you need, if you are get all the crosses that you're getting off. I mean, we had ten crosses in that game against Milan. You know how many were accurate? Zero. Right, Zero accurate right, crosses. Right. Yes. If if that is not working, you unless have you to, count Chelix on the second goal, you have to. Yeah. Well, you have to. You have to. You you have to hold it. I mean, you have to come up with something. You know, you have to have a plan B, a plan C, um, because okay. You know, I understand. Mourinho always said, "Well, we're playing with a three man defense because a guy like Smalling can't play otherwise." Okay. Well, now the guy. The, the guy named Smalling is not delivering the performances that you're looking for. He's clearly having a hard time. Diego Llorente and Gianluca Mancini are also having a hard time. So who exactly benefits from playing with the current formation? Is it Spinazzola? I don't see Spinazzola doing so well. I don't see Nicola Zaleski doing so well. So who benefits from this? You understand? Like, if it's not working, you got to change it. I yeah. So in a, in a way... This 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 uh, international break, which I dread because again, it's like this this moment of you just started the season, so you showed a little, but it's enough for the media, the fans to lose their minds, and there is nothing happening, and so you can build and build plenty of storylines, um, and and people will listen because nothing's happening. So, but at least. This is a period where I don't care. Today, Jose Mourinho posted a photo on Instagram where he was like advertising some Adidas event that he uh, took part in. And then he, at the end, he just wrote something like into uh, and now back to Rome uh, to coach seven players. I don't care if there are seven players. I don't care if there is two players. I What I care about is that you, your staff, come up with a plan. A plan B, a plan C, something, an alternative to this because this is not working. And I don't accept the fact that uh, of what a lot of people say, well, the players suck. So what can you expect? No, it it really, it can be both. It can be the players are not good enough or maybe are not comfortable enough. I said it on the live stream that to me, the embodiment of, you know, of persisting with something that is clearly not working is having Nikola Zaleski play in the position that he's playing at. This is a man that has made 74 appearances for Roma. He has one assist to his name, playing as a left wing back. Right. 74 appearances, one assist. So he's the embodiment of this, of of sticking to something that is not working because until until it benefits the defense, until the three five two benefits Chris Smalling, benefits Diego Llorente, and you are able to lock it down to 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 re- give us some some kind of reassurance to the team, and also you you know you give shape to the team to the organization. Okay, I can accept that, and I'm saying I don't care about the brand of football as long as you don't concede. You show me that you're rock solid and that. Uh, everything is going to be all right. I want to have that feeling, the same feeling I had when we faced Real Sociedad, when we faced Bayer Leverkusen. I want to have that feeling. But once we see this team just crumble under the press, uh, under the pressure of of uh, Ruben Loftus Cheek and Rafael Leao and and even the the Verona players and even Antonio Candreva, then something's wrong, and you have to prevent it from happening in the future. So it doesn't. This this shouldn't be a discussion of oh how to salvage the season. No, this is a discussion that should 
uh, talk about what can we do in order to pre prevent this from happening in the future because we are match day three, so there is a lot of football left to play. But something needs to be done because Nikola Zaleski is not having fun, Chris Smalling is not having fun, Jose Mourinho is not having fun, we are not having fun, and the results are not there. No, they're not there at all. So I, I guess to in this final part here, then I, I suppose we need to address the like what is or what uh, I suppose what 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 should be the actual level of concern because, as you said, nothing was lost. Okay, nothing was lost against Milan. There was absolutely no objective that is now out of reach. There was nothing changed about what should be. Uh, uh, your objectives of the season. So I, I, I hate the talk and, and we there's no reason uh, or no, no need to bring up uh, about how this constantly happens. And it is almost like the, the radios are, are, you know, gluttons for punishment. You know, they enjoy the pain, I, I think is the only way that uh, it, it makes sense to me because of how often this, uh, this happens after every uh, run of poor results. But that's a story. That's that's a debate for another time. What is your actual level of concern? Because again, I feel much different today than I did on Friday evening. But I think it is clear, as you just outlined, that the things that perhaps we were able to uh, do last season or do in the past under Jose Mourinho, it seems to at least through three rounds they're having problems with they are not able to do so how worried should we be i have to tell you i i am i am worried uh, strictly from the standpoint of wow the guys we were able to count on to be you know the most reliable the pillars of uh, consistency have been the ones to let us down through these first three matches so that's worrying i am also and maybe this is a, a, a secondary point that, again, requires a, a, an episode in and of itself to, to talk about. But, man, we are in match day three, and uh, Renato Sanchez, two matches missed. Paulo Dybala, two matches missed. I can't do this again, you know, only a few rounds into the season where we do this injury thing. Usually, we, we, the, 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 the footballing gods, at least have the decency to wait to punish us since, until February, March, or April. Oh, uh, Ginny Wijnaldum, excuse G me. Yeah, <laughs> Ginny Wijnaldum. I understand but seriously, that there is a teammate sliding into somebody's leg. But... Well, yeah, but still. But, uh, I, I, yeah, it's still, yeah, it was pretty rough. Yeah, but but I, I, I understand that these guys, it, it is not as if they had uh, no history of, of injuries prior to Roma, and then they come here and... There must be something within uh, the water that is affecting this. Uh, this now, uh, they have a whole new set of injuries. So clearly, something is going on within the club. I don't know if something is going within the club because the number of times they have tr they have changed the, the 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 surface of that training pitch, man. Uh, they would be able to give uh, the prior surface to every single supporter, uh, so they can have one. Uh, you know. Uh, a small I think they've had pitch they've, in their I gardens. Think, I think they've had a, a change of the pitch for each kid that you've uh, you've produced and welcomed into this world. I think that's yes. how they coordinate <laughs> because that's the frequency with which I have to write on the website the Roma or remodeling Trimoria oh training pitch. You know, uh, it, to me, what is worrying is I, I don't want to come on here or on the live stream and do those kind of you know, again, interventions where everybody's losing their mind and I'm trying to calm everybody because uh, because it's not right, because it's only September. So we should actually, there should be something that we actually get to enjoy. Um, obviously, one point in three games is not good enough. This is uh, the worst start in a long time, but it doesn't mean anything. They ha There have been a lot of situations where teams, even last year, got one point in three games where it was disappointing, where even top teams couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't put two passes together. Uh, the important thing is for Roma to understand what didn't work for them now. And, and that goes from the players to the coach. There has to be 
an acknowledgement, also a confrontation between the two, where it's just, listen, I can't do this, or you're asking me to do this, and I can't. And the coach also, and the coaching staff, acknowledging that, okay, then if this is not working, if this whole myth of the three-man defense benefiting anyone is not working, then let's move on to something else. I don't want to see Brian Cristante play as a mezzala with uh, Paredes as a as a as a as a playmaker in front of defense. I want rather Cristante in front of the defense as the defensive midfielder and Paredes as the mezzala. Um, I want some mobility. I want some pace. I want some energy which wasn't there. I want a team that does not look tired. Obviously, it's not good when 11 players leave on international duty, especially Romelu Lukaku. I mean, I don't understand how that functions, even from a point of view of the Belgian Federation. Like, you know, this guy hasn't trained with a team in over two months. You know, this guy has been training individually and still has a long way to go into getting to any match fitness. And, and yet you call him up, and so you basically take away the probably the most important signing of the summer from Mourinho and also from his teammates. And so how are they supposed to get to know each other? I was hoping for that to, to happen, but at least the, the, this international break should give us time to really reflect on what went wrong and also um, address the question of how can we prevent it? How can we get better? Because nothing is lost. So it's embarrassing. It's bad. You are, you know, you're way behind the others. But if you find that, you know, you find the way to to have the new guys, the old guys click, because really it comes back to that. It's not even all, well, Hussein Wawar is incompatible with, with, um, with the others. No, it's a matter of everybody's not performing up to the standards, you know, up to the expectations. So... There has to be really some some accountability, both on the player's side and the manager's side, and the the mindset of nothing is lost. We got to figure this out. We are going to figure this out. Yeah, I, I think there's no other way to really put it. Uh, okay, we we will end it there again. I depending on where you end up uh, on your mindset of this. I was going to say, uh, mercifully, they uh, they have given to us an international break. But as you just outlined, a couple uh, uh, items in regards to that are, are not great. Obviously, Lukaku, it would have been it would have been more preferred if he was able to remain. But uh, alas, this is the situation we find ourselves in. Again, we both believe firmly nothing has been lost. Um, and there's no reason, at least right now, to panic. Trust me, this is Roma. They they will leave uh, to us the panicking to be done at some point. We just there's no need to do it so early. So let's at least hold off on that uh, aspect of the season, uh, at least for a few months. So again, we will uh, be back later in the week. We'll talk about uh, some summer transfer stuff. Sort of give our grades now that the window has officially closed. Reflect back on the deals that were completed, ones they missed out on perhaps, and give an assessment of Roma relative to the other clubs in Sandia uh, in how they did during the summer window. So we will be back again on Thursday. Until then, ciao.